Welcome back to Master Data Management 1. In the previous video, you walked through the steps you need to take in order to prepare your SFDC to MDM process for your synchronization. You created the MDM connector and synchronized it with the SFDC source. You created a custom map to transform the data into the correct profile format, and you were even able to see the data within the MDM platform. In this next video, you will learn about some extra features available to you for better data validation, enrichment, and tracking. At this point, we have a working MDM solution, including two target sources and some sample data to work with. It's time to look at some new features that will enhance your current MDM solution. You may remember earlier in class when we talked about the four parts that make up a model. We really only configured two of them, the match rules and fields. There are actually two other features noted on the screen now that make up a model that we're going to take a look at, starting with the data quality steps. A data quality step is a component of a model that specifies data validation and enrichment actions to be applied by the repository to incoming source entities. Essentially, data quality steps give you several very useful tools to give you full control over the data that enters your MDM repository. The initial data quality screen looks like this. There are three main tools you can choose from. You can add a business rule. You can insert a process call or install a branded service. We will be discussing each of these briefly, but remember, you can always learn more by going to the MDM user guide. The business rule data quality step allows you to harness the power of the business rule shape from within the MDM platform. For some of you, this may be the first time working with the business rule shape, but don't worry. We're actually going to be going through a step-by-step -step process in order to set it up for our integration. For now, all you need to understand is that a business rule shape works similarly to a decision shape, but with more options. The business rule shape allows you to select a number of inputs that you want to track within the shape itself. Then you can set one-to-many conditions based on those inputs that you selected. For instance, we can see in the image on the screen that the first input is ID, and the first condition states if ID is equal to account. If that statement is true, then the document passes that condition. If that statement is false, then the document fails that condition. As long as a document or record passes all conditions, it will move to the next step in the MDM workflow. If the document or record fails one of the conditions, it will be sent to the quarantine area for the data steward to look over. This can be very useful to help weed out records that are missing critical data or even help track down older delinquent accounts from being updated. We will discuss the business rules data quality step in more detail during our next exercise. The next data quality step is the process call tool. It allows you to link any process you have in your Atomsphere account straight into your MDM solution. The process call data quality step is the ultimate tool to use when creating your MDM solution. This particular data quality step takes the power of the Atomsphere platform and puts it into the hands of the MDM user. Literally anything that is possible in Atomsphere can be created and used to validate and enrich your data. Because the data quality step occurs before the match rule step, you will be able to take the data coming into your MDM platform, send it through one to many Atomsphere processes, and then have the match rules applied to it. This will allow you to look for data issues and fix them automatically before allowing them into your repository. Any records that cause errors to occur will be sent to the quarantine area for your data steward to manually verify. Over time, the data steward will be able to identify common problems, add a fix into the process called data quality steps, and then that error will be fixed automatically in the future. Anything that is possible within the Atomsphere platform is possible within the process call data quality step. Finally, you will have the option of using the Add Services link that will allow you to download and install extra third-party services available to all users. Once downloaded, you can have your data validated by these services based off of their particular use. Currently, there are two services that can be used, Done in Bradstreet for identity matching and Locate for address verification. The benefits of leveraging one of these is that they are essentially plug and play. So if I want to leverage Locate to validate and enrich some of my address information for the contacts I'm pulling in, all I would need to do is press the install button and follow a brief wizard to point to this resource within my MDM solution. One thing to note is that you do need to have a valid subscription for these services in order to use them within the MDM platform. 
In order to keep things simple for our class, we will be inserting and configuring a business rule shape to help us identify incomplete records and send them to our quarantine area for our data steward to review. So feel free to follow along in the activity guide while I demonstrate exercise number 22, where I will add the business rule shape data quality step. So I'm going to start by heading back to the MDM platform. When we left off, we were in the quarantine area, so we're going to need to move over into our models tab in order to access our contact model. From here, we can select the contact model from the models list. And finally, now that we're in our contact model, you can find the data quality sub tab in the upper middle part of the screen in between the match rules tab and the tags tab. Since this is our first time selecting the data quality sub tab, it says that we can add our first data quality step by clicking on this large green button. So I'm going to go ahead and click that to begin. You can see from the drop down menu here, we have several different options to us. We can add an atom sphere process call. We can add a business rule and we can see that I have locate installed already. But if I wanted to see the other services that we have to offer, you can click on the add services button to open that up. We can see that the Dun & Bradstreet option here is ready to install. And if I were to click on this and install it, it would then be added to my available data quality services. From this list, I'm going to choose the business rules option by clicking on the business rule link. Now we start by constructing our business rule by selecting our inputs. And these are the fields that are in our actual model uh, that we are going to start tracking. So essentially as records come in, if that field has some data in it and we designate that in the inputs area, then it will start looking in that field for new records and any data within that field will then be set to our conditions area. So as we go through this, it should make a little bit more sense. So for our inputs, we're actually going to click on this drop down uh, button here and then select field. You can give it a custom name if you'd like but I'm going to abstain from doing that and simply click on the field option here. We can see that we have all of the different fields that were, are within our contact model here. And the first one I'm going to choose is going to be phone. Now that I've selected phone, I'll go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and select the inputs drop down again, select the field option, and I'm going to insert a second field, which is going to be email. Then click OK. You can now see that our two inputs that we have associated with this business rule is the phone and the email fields. Now we're ready to add the conditions. In order to add your first condition, simply click on the add a condition link here which will then open up a series of fields for us to identify what this condition will do. The first condition I'm going to add is going to involve the phone field. And I'm going to say is not empty. So you can scroll down to the bottom of that second drop down and click is not empty. And then I'm going to save it. And essentially what I'm saying is that if a record comes in and there is no phone number in the phone field, it means that it's going to kick this out of our uh, MDM repository and put it into the quarantine area for our steward to take a look at. This way, if there's any way that they could reach out to the client or if there's a way that they could collect that data somewhere else, um, then we would need to uh, have the data steward manually do that in order to make a full profile before we actually go ahead and put that into our golden record area. We're actually going to do a similar thing for our email as well. I'm going to add a second condition. This time I'm going to use email and I will also select is not empty. And then I'll click save. Now you may have noticed that within the conditions area, we have this thing called the top level operator. And this is an important concept to understand because it's going to change the way that your conditions are set up. The way this works is that if we have the and top level operator selected, it's going to insert this and piece in between each of our different conditions, which means that the phone field cannot be empty and the email field cannot be empty. If one or the other or both are empty, then it's going to be a failure. However, if I use the or operator, we can see now that has changed. 
Essentially what this means is that if the phone and the email is empty, it will be rejected. However, if one or both of the phone or email fields are there, that will mean that it will be a success and be passed into our golden record area. For our purposes, we're going to keep the top level operator of AND. Now the final piece to the business rule configuration is the error message. And the neat thing about this is we can actually create a custom error message that's going to allow us to better identify what the problem is and possibly even identify it for the data steward so that when they, when they take a look at it, they'll be able to figure out how to fix it right away. Now in this error message, we can actually add another kind of input. Uh, if we drop, click on this drop down menu, we can see we have phone and email. However, I want to add another dimension to this. So what I'm going to do is go back to the inputs up top. I'm going to select field, and then I'm going to choose the name field so that we can get a custom name in our error message. And then I'll click OK. Now what I can do is I can click on the insert value down here on the bottom of the error message. And now we can see that the name input is there as well. I'm going to choose the name input and we can see that now it pops up with a curvy bracket and a one followed by another curvy bracket. This means wherever the curvy bracket one is within our error message, it's going to dynamically put in the name field into that area. So what I'm going to do is actually use a bit of a custom message here and it's going to say the contact and then it will say the name on that uh, noted on that record within the name field does not have the proper contact information. Please update the phone and email fields and resubmit. So this gives our data steward a really good idea how they can fix this and what they need to do in order to make that happen. Now that our business rules has been complete, we can click next and we need to give it a name. So I'm going to name this valid phone and email and then click finish. And we can see as soon as we click the finish button, our new data quality step business rule has been added to the list of the business rules that all of the records that come into the MDM repository are going to have to pass. So now it's your turn to go ahead and try exercise number 22 on your own. Once you've completed the exercise and your data quality step is all set up, feel free to start the next video.